Welcome everyone to this Mix It Up tutorial. Today we're going to talk about weight actions and how they affect your commands as well as how commands actually run within Mix It Up as you're using it. To give a little context to where we're going into this today's lesson, um, the assumption is you've used Mix Up a little bit or you've dove into a little bit for how the program works. And we're going to start talk about how you can actually set your commands up in ways to allow you to block commands to run for certain amounts of time or to ensure other commands can't stomp on top of each other. The method we use for this is known as the wait action. You can add a wait action just like any other action you have in a command, like a chat or a sound or a video at any point. But waits are a special little action that not everyone always really understands how they work or how our command system works. So the purpose of this video is to kind of dive in a little bit and talk about how they factor into how commands work. Now we're going to start off by just kind of walking through a very basic example version of a command here, just something simple to start off with. So let's just pretend we have a chat command here. I'm going to head to the command section of the app here, and I'm just going to click on new command to make a brand new command. We'll take a look at one here. So I'm in the command editor here, and I'm just going to start making a really, really basic command. Nothing fancy. It's just going to have a simple chat message in there. And, you know, just for purposes, we'll just call this command test. It's going to be our test command. And you'll be able to trigger it by running explanation point test in chat. And all it's going to say is just hello world. So really basic example, nothing fancy, you know, at this point, this is kind of basic commands. We're going to build ourselves up from this. Okay, so I made this basic command here. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to say test. You'll see it's I've saved it. It's now over here. Just reopen up so we can kind of see these side by side as we're testing this to help make the scenario a little easier to kind of break down. So I'm going to head to the chat page here, and I'm just going to run this test command. And you're going to notice as soon as I run explanation point test, Message is going to fire right back saying, hey, test, hello world. Basic, nothing fancy here. Now, when this command triggers, it's going to run through the actions that are in the list one after the other. Now, there's only one action here. It's a chat message that just says, hello world. But let's say I wanted to have it do something with a bit of time duration. So maybe it did something and then it waited a little bit of time and then it did something else. Well, let's dive into that a little bit. So I'm just going to go over here to this command. I'm going to add a wait action here at the bottom. And we're just going to make it for, let's say, you know, two seconds. Sure, sure, you know, two, short amount of time, just enough to see there's that little bit of that delay there. And then I'll add another chat message afterwards. So after it says, hello world, it waits two seconds. It's going to say, wait is over. So when I run this command, start to finish, if I run this either via exclamation point test in chat, or I hit the play button, here, you can also test it out from here. What you'll notice is the first message is going to get sent. It's going to wait a couple seconds, and that's going to send the second message. So let's see how that looks. So if I go back over here and I run this command again, you'll notice that we have the hello world, waits a couple seconds, and then it fires the wait is over. So I can change this wait amount to any amount I want, but this adds a little bit of artificial delay into a command. Now you might be wondering, why would I do this? Well, maybe you have some timing you want to implement inside of your command. Maybe you want to have certain things trigger in certain timing orientations, kind of like if you were editing a video, right? You want maybe sound effects or video clips or text to appear in specific timing when things happen. Well, that's where the beauty of wait actions could come into this. So for example, let's, see, let's switch away from chat messages and do something a little more specific. So let's say I had a sound action I wanted to play. So let's say maybe there's like a shout out command, right? All right. I have this sound action here. And let's say I want to pick a sound that's going to have, you know, some sort of visual effect. Maybe it, maybe it's a dramatic buildup for something. And then I want to wait until a really specific point in that sound and then have something else happen. Maybe it's, you know, the sound buildup. And then when it finishes, then the user gets shout out at that same time. You can use that wait action to kind of get that timing essence for how you want things to work. Because the way our, our action system works, which is not necessarily always obvious at first, is that actions don't wait for their work to complete. They simply start their work and then move on. Now, there's a couple of exceptions to this that we'll kind of cover in a separate video, but generally speaking, around 95% of scenarios, all that happens when an action triggers is it just starts the thing and then moves on. So a sound simply starts play. It doesn't wait for the sound to finish all the way. A video only starts playing. It doesn't wait for that video to finish all the time. 
you just might not notice it because other actions don't take a lot of time. Sending a chat message is nearly instant. Uh, adding currency is nearly instant. But things that have time duration can take time. So you can add a wait action to add either maybe additional buffer or less buffer to allow things to trigger. So let's see here, I'm just gonna go add a quick sound in here and we'll get something that has a little timing essence to it. So let's see if we have a good sound here. So I picked a really basic sound here for those that ever played GoldenEye, the N64 game. It's, this is the sound effect that plays when someone dies. So there's a very specific timing to the way the sound effect occurs. So we'll just kind of play it just to give you a little bit of perception to it. So listen here for a sec. And you can hear there's kind of a cut, you know, there's, there's a little of a build up and there's that kind of lull at the end. So let's say that maybe I want to get the timing of this so that when that lull starts, that's when I send a message, maybe to say like, hey, go check out this cool person or something. Right now, we'll just have it say, you know, you know, something like cool effect happens. And that will allow us to kind of get a, a little bit of a timing interest. So the timing is not be exact right now, but let's maybe assume it's going to be, uh, you know, three and a half seconds. We'll see how it kind of works its way out. So I can put in here 3.5, and I'm going to actually, rather than run it from the test over here, I'm just going to hit the play button so we kind of test it a little faster and iterate. So let's give it a try and see how this works timing-wise. So listen for the sound, and then watch as the text message comes out, and that's going to be our kind of timing test to get see if we can get the exact timing right the way we want. So it's a little bit later maybe, so maybe we bump it down to like 2.5 this time. Let's see how that looks. Close, almost. All right, so maybe uh, we, uh, it looks like we could have just kept it the same way it was, maybe about two seconds. So let's try that one more time here. Okay, that was pretty good there. Now, Wait actions, like you've seen here, allow that sort of timing effect where you can get things kind of timed or looped in sort of different ways. Where things come into play with wait actions a lot more commonly people are going to see is how other commands interact with each other. I.e., if I have two different commands, or even the same command running, certain things like maybe sound effects or videos, you don't want to overlap. You want to have them kind of be bucketed in a way of how they're actually set up. Before we kind of dig into that, I'm going to go through a little more of a simple example to think about logistically the way steps and ordering of things work. So to give a little more of a better example of how this works, let's start with actually something that doesn't really have to do much logistics with mix it up and more talk about how things work in real life, right? So mix it up can be thought of when you're making commands kind of like recipes, like an actual physical food recipe. There's steps in the process. And it's important that certain steps happen in the order that they happen, right? Top to bottom, like you're making a recipe, start to finish. And when you're doing certain things, like when you're cooking, for example, time and how time affects those things is very important. Like those steps, when you're doing certain steps, they don't just happen instantly. They take a certain amount of time to happen. So for example, uh, let's say I just want to make some basic pasta, okay? So maybe the first step of the process, I'm going to put the pot on the stove. I'm going to heat up some water. How long does that take? It could take five minutes, could take 10 minutes. It's hard to know. It's a little bit of variable time. You kind of got to wait till it finishes. Then I'm going to add the pasta in, but then I'm going to wait a predetermined amount of time, right? Because different pasta has different amounts. So let's say I'm putting in, uh, you know, rotini. Rotini has like, I think about eight to 10 minutes. So you add a certain amount of wait time in there for that pasta to finish boiling. And then after that's done, you can strain the pasta out. Now, what's important to consider about this is that when you're adding that pasta in and when you're straining it out, you have to wait for that time to finish because you don't want to just put, you don't just put the, the pasta in the water and then pull it out and all of a sudden it's done, right? You have to wait to get that build up and that timing correctly. Now, when you think about this in the context of mix it up, commands and actions work very similar to this. Here's an example. So I've just swapped this out here now with a different sort of idea, something in the streamer world of a shout out, for example right? Maybe a shout out that you have is going to have a cool effect. It's going to send a chat message. It's going to play a cool sound effect, maybe like that golden eye death sound we have. And then it's going to wait a certain amount of time because we want to do something fancy, right? We want to make this be a really cool shout out. So maybe we have some sort of effect where it's got this big build up sound. And then when it reaches a certain apex, we're going to have that person's profile image, maybe spin in and show and pop and do some cool effects. But we don't want that to happen 
right away. We want it to happen at a very specific moment in time. So just like how we're cooking the pasta previously, we do the same idea for commands. We would have a chat message maybe that sends out first. We start to play the sound, and then we want to wait, let's say maybe 10 seconds for our sound, because that reaches the apex when things are ready to go. Then as soon as that 10 seconds is over, we're going to show that image right there. That visual effect attained with that sound is influenced by the wait action there. That specifically is going to block that command from being able to move on until that wait time is done, and then go into the next effect. So how does this all play in when we start to talk about not just a single command, but other commands influencing each other? Well, let's look at a practical example here. So I'm going to just actually do, we'll go back to kind of my old version of this a little bit. I'm just going to make it have a chat message this time. And I'm going to make this command just do two things. It's going to say the word start, and that's going to say the word end. And there's going to be a wait of five seconds in between here. Now, what's going to happen, as we kind of saw from our previous example, it's going to send, it's going to send the word message start to chat. It's going to wait five seconds, and that's going to send the word end afterwards. So nothing crazy, and we'll just test this by hitting the play button here. So you see start gets fired out there. It's waiting. And you can see it's still loading, because that's how it's showing it's running. And then it says end, and it's done. So nothing fancy. We just kind of change the wording up here. Now, how does this work when we're actually running this from chat? What happens if somebody wanted to spam this command back and forth? Well, we want to make sure that this stuff doesn't fire off. Right, man, we don't want this stuff to stack up by default. There's ways we can do that, but we're not going to cover that in today's lesson. So we'll cover that in more advanced topic here. So let's actually see how this works practically in chat if somebody were to try to run this a couple of times. So I'm just going to start off by just clearing chat to kind of clear slate so we have a nice good place to start off with. So if I just run explanation void test from chat just once here, just like before, we're going to see it say start. It's going to pause for about five seconds, and that's going to say end afterwards. Now, what happens if I were to run this command, let's say, two times really, really quickly? What you might think at first is that, oh, no, it's going to spam start, and then it's going to spam end twice back to back. Not quite. This will be a topic we're going to cover a little more in detail in a separate dedicated video known about command locks, but we're just going to kind of lightly cover it here. Mixup has a system built in where it ensures that commands try not to stomp on top of each other the way that you might not expect them to, so it can make, provide a better experience for your stream. The default setup of Mix It Up is that commands of the same type will never be able to run on top of each other. They can only have one command running at the same time. So for example, you can't have two chat commands running in parallel. Only one command can run. And if there's a command already running, all the other ones have to wait for that one to finish and back up in the order they were running. Now, that's only the case for commands of the same type. So two chat commands can't run at the same time. But for example, you could have a chat command and an event command both run at the same time because they're different types. Now, there's ways you can work around this to build better systems to make sure things don't stop. Like we said, we're going to cover this in a separate video, but we just want to kind of talk about that briefly. So if I run two chat commands at the same time or nearly the same time, both are not going to run at the same time because I have this little wait time in there telling it to wait five seconds. One's going to start. It's going to say start. It's going to wait five seconds. It's going to end. Then when it ends, the second one will start up, wait five seconds and end. So they kind of queue up getting ready to run like they're in a line waiting to get into a club or something. So we'll show that out here. So I'm just going to write exclamation point test. I'm going to trigger it. And as soon as I do this, I'm going to do it another time to queue up another command. Watch it happen. So the first one goes in. I type a second one while it's still running. Notice nothing happened yet. And as soon as end goes, it starts right off the bat again. Because now the second one that we queued up went in, it's waiting, and then it ended. If you want to see a real practical version of this, you can actually check out the commands history page. So I'll show that right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spam up five of these really, really fast back to back. And then we're going to go visit the command history page over here, which is all the way at the bottom. And the command history page is a great way to look at some of this stuff. So you can actually see commands as they come in, who triggered them, what type they were, what the command was. You can actually even rerun them if you want to. So I'm going to trigger these up and we're going to watch the state of these commands as they come in, where they're going to go from pending to in progress to completed as they move from one to the next to the next. Okay. So let's queue up a few of these, and we're going to see how they actually look back to back. So there's one, two, three, four, 
five. So we're going to run over here real quick and take a look. You'll see one just finished, one's running, and three are pending. Then when that one completes, the next one starts running. The other two are still pending. Then when this one finishes, the next one starts running. One is pending. And then when that one finishes, the last one will start running. And then that'll complete. And that'll fill up everything in the queue. Now, this example, we just showed one command. But the same concept applies if you had five chat commands, or 10 chat commands, or 100 chat commands. Wait actions allow you to do that to block that command from happening in different ways. And you can do that with not just chat messages, but sounds. So if we make this a little more basic, rather than do this start and end, we're going to add like a little bit of a sound effect to there just to make it a little bit easier to discern. Because the same idea, right? It's just actions. It doesn't matter what it is. So if I hit up here, I'm going to move right above the start. I'm going to do that same sound effect, that golden eye sound before, which was maybe not a, it was like about three and a half seconds. We're going to change this time to match it a little more closer to what the time was. So about three and a half seconds, give or take. So it's going to play the sound. It's going to say start, because that's our little test message here to like see how we can actually get the timing right. It's going to wait three and a half seconds, and then it's going to send end. So that same idea here, we're going to watch and actually hear the sound effect as it happens. Okay. So let's actually give it a try now. We're going to head over to the chat page. I'm just going to clear this out to make it a little easier to see stuff. I'm going to queue up just two of these for right now. And you're going to listen to the way the sound effect triggers off. You'll notice... Just like we did the wait actions, it's going to start the sound. It's going to say start. It's going to wait three and a half seconds to say end. So we make sure that those sounds don't collide on top of each other, even if we queue multiple of them up at the same time. All right? Let's give a listen. You can hear it as it pops out here. So here's the first one. And then the second one, it's queued. The listen hasn't started. And there goes the second one there, because it queued up just like we talked about. Now, what happens if I adjusted that uh, wait time and I made it lower? Like maybe I only made it one second or I didn't know it's even pretend I didn't even have a wait action at all. If I didn't have this wait action, you're going to see this stuff queue up real fast. So I actually see a really bad example. So watch, if we delete this, do the same idea. We're going to save it and run it. You'll actually see that it'll just start playing the sounds almost on top of each other, overlapping them. Cause there's nothing blocking the command or forcing it to wait a certain amount of time before it finishes. So if I do the same over here, I'm just going to clear to kind of get us a fresh state. And then I'm going to run test twice back to back. And you'll listen, the second time I trigger that test, you're going to hear the sounds kind of overlap and mesh with each other and start to get all this bob because we have nothing blocking the first command, making the second command wait. So give it a listen here. So here goes one. And see how they kind of overlapped that way because there was nothing blocking the first command from running all the way through to make the other commands wait in time for it. So it's been a very, like I said, very initial kind of basic level tour just to kind of teach you a little bit of how the way our command system works and the importance of wait actions. In a later tutorial that'll be coming out soon, we're going to dive more into how commands actually interact with each other in that command lock system we talked about which is a little more of an advanced topic that really deserves its own video because we're going to have to get into the nitty gritty of not just how command locks work, but also those same wait actions we've been talking about today, how those influence those command locks and how they play into there. So thank you for watching this video. Hope we found it useful. Uh, if you do, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be more looking forward to doing more future uh, mix-up tutorials here for you on this channel. Thank you, everyone. Have yourself a good day.